Good morning, and welcome to a special edition of the WORF Report for March 25th, Keeping America Vigilant 2021. Sidestepping Warrants. The Supreme Court of the United States heard oral arguments yesterday in what could be one of the most historic cases related to warrants and the confiscation of guns we've ever seen. The case is Coniglia v. Strom and surrounds the question of whether or not the community caretaking exception to the Fourth Amendment's warrant requirement extends to the home. The Fourth Amendment states, quote, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrants shall issue, but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Now, the community caretaking exception to the Fourth Amendment is something that was created by the U.S. Supreme Court about 50 years ago which basically allows property to be confiscated without a warrant in cases such as vehicle impounds or to remove nuisances like inoperable vehicles on public roads, such as after an accident. One would call this the gateway being used in this current case to essentially attempt to remove the requirement of a warrant to search one's home and take their guns, for example, as happened with Edward Coniglia. The creation of this exception was dangerous to begin with, but what happened here in this case was that Edward and his wife of 22 years, Kim, got into an argument that became exhausting and carried on for quite some time. For dramatic effect, in the middle of the argument, Edward was reportedly being sarcastic when he retrieved his gun, set it on the kitchen table in front of his wife, and said, quote, Why don't you just shoot me and get me out of my misery? The two continued to argue until Edward decided to leave the home to cool off, but when he returned, the argument rekindled, and Kim ended up leaving the home herself for a night in a hotel. In the morning, when Kim tried calling the home, she got no answer, and she became worried and contacted the police to perform a well check on her husband and to escort her home. When police arrived, they spoke with Edward, who according to the police report, quote, seemed normal, was calm for the most part, and said he would never commit suicide. He had no history of violence or self-harm and had no criminal record. Nonetheless, police pressed Coniglia to go for a psychiatric evaluation, and he only agreed under the promise by police that they were not going to seize his guns while he was gone. Police then lied to Coniglia's wife, Kim, telling her that Edward had consented to the confiscation of his guns, and she then in good faith led the officers to the couple's two handguns, which were promptly confiscated. There was no mention of any emergency at the time of the seizure, or that it was done to prevent imminent danger. Needless to say, Edward was immediately released from the hospital, but then only was able to get his guns back after filing a civil rights suit. A district court and appellate court sided with police, who argued they acted under the limited community caretaking exception. The case has now reached the Supreme Court, and Coniglia's attorneys have warned that extending the community caretaking exception to homes would, quote, grant police a blank check to intrude upon the home. The fraudulent Biden administration filed an amicus brief in this case urging the high court to uphold the lower court's ruling, with the Justice Department saying that warrants should not be, quote, presumptively required when a government official's action is objectively grounded in a non-investigatory public interest, such as health or safety. A joint amicus brief by the ACLU, the Cato Institute, and the American Conservative Union states, quote, in jurisdictions that have extended the community caretaking exception to homes, everything from loud music to leaky pipes have been used to justify warrantless invasion of the home. There we go again, folks, taking away our rights under the false pretense of public health and safety. You all do realize that they've already taken away our right to liberty and forcing us to wear masks in order to conduct daily acts of living and are now essentially saying that we can have it back if we agree to get vaccinated and or tested and are able to prove it. And that's not all. A federal court of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals ruled 7-4 to four yesterday that there is no right to carry a gun in public. The suit is a challenge to Hawaii's law that requires residents to show an urgency or need to carry a firearm, be of good character, and be, quote, engaged in the protection of life and liberty. A man by the name of George Young was denied twice for a firearm carry license. The court stated, quote, there is no right to carry arms openly in public, nor is there any such right within the scope of the Second Amendment. And we find no general right to carry arms in the public square for self-defense. Young's attorney will now ask the corrupt U.S. Supreme Court to intervene, but basically what they just said is that if it's not specifically defined in the Constitution, it does not apply. The Constitution is intentionally written simply and in general 
so that the government does not place limits on our certain rights we have as Americans. The Second Amendment clearly states, quote, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. It does not say the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed unless we did not state the specific circumstance in this amendment. How ridiculous is this? These are clever tactics being carried out within our judicial system in coordination with corrupt politicians for the sole purpose of distorting, diluting, and removing the rights of the people and our Constitution as a whole. Does anybody else find it oddly coincidental that all of these things are happening simultaneously just after a reported mass shooting? By the way, the guy was originally from Syria, the place we just bombed last month. Another coincidence? Americans need to stand up for the rights we were given and say no to this tyrannical government working tirelessly to overthrow our Constitution. That is exactly what's happening here, and we've consistently said foreign adversaries led by China have successfully infiltrated our government through the Democratic Party, and now even the Republican Party, in exchange for immense personal wealth to weaken, control, and destroy America from within. It's all part of the Chinese Communist Party's sick obsession and quest for world domination. And the 2020 election was only the first move in this long-played objective, and they've been planning it for decades. Wait until we launch our new platform when you finally get to see the video we tried to get out before the election from a Chinese watchdog group who tried to warn us of what they were doing before it happened. It's absolutely huge. Keep praying, and thanks for watching, America, and thanks for patiently waiting as we put the final touches on our new platform, which will be launched very soon. And please, if you haven't done so already, support our channel by signing up early for it at theworfreport.com. Once we finally migrate over, we will not be uploading our segments anywhere else, and you'll need a subscription to watch. It helps us to keep doing what we're doing without the censorship and suppression, and without us having to rely on advertisers or anyone else that could potentially shut us down at their own discretion. We appreciate your support, and we love you all. This has been a special edition of The Worth Report for March 25th, keeping you vigilant, America, 2021. God bless you all. God bless President Trump, and God bless America.